just get started. Our theme for our preschool and kindergarten friends this month is I spy with my little eyes. So we're going to be learning about things that we can see to help us believe in the things that Jesus does. Hmm. So I think that we should sing a little song before we have a quick story for our uh, first look friends. How about Jesus loves the little children? Oh, okay. Can you sing it with me? Yeah. Will you all sing with me? Stand up, sing, make some, make some body movements, move around. It's a joyful song. It's a happy song. And let's sing it together. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world again. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. That's right. Jesus loves all of us. And you know what? Our bottom line this month is I can believe in Jesus. Can you say that with me? I can, I can believe, believe in Jesus. Jesus. Who can believe in Jesus? I can, can believe, believe in Jesus. Jesus. And you know, we've got a new scripture this month. So try it with me. Here we go. Put your hands together. These, These are, are written, written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that comes from John 20, 31. Let's do it again. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. John 20, 31. Well, you know, we always have a story that is true that comes from the Bible. And I'm so grateful that we have these stories that we can share. So our story today, another true story, is about a woman and an angel came to her and told her she was gonna have a baby. Any idea who that woman was? Hmm. Mary. You're right. It's Mary. An angel came to Mary and said, you're going to have a baby and it's going to be a boy and you are going to name him Jesus. You think Mary was surprised? Uh, I would think. I think she was really surprised. So Mary and her husband Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. Now, if you can see this road, it looks like it's very long. And so with Mary being ready to have a child, she couldn't do all the walking. So what animal did she have to ride on? A donkey. A donkey. You think that was comfortable? Well, probably not real comfortable. No, I don't think so either. But you know what? She had very specific instructions and she knew that that's what they had to do. So they traveled. And when they got to Bethlehem, guess what? Jesus was born, but there's no hospital in Bethlehem. And there were no places for them to sleep. There were no places for them to go to have the baby. So they were, the only place they could go was in a, a stable and Jesus was born and put in a manger. And all the animals were surrounding them. You think that was difficult? I would imagine. But guess what? They did it. And then Jesus grew up to be a man. You might not be able to see these very well, but Jesus had all kinds of miracles that he performed. 
and did amazing things that only Jesus can do. He told a thunderstorm to stop and it stopped. Look how calm the waves are. He healed people. People could walk when they had never walked before. And do you remember the story of the 5,000? He fed 5,000 with just two loaves of bread and fish. Jesus is amazing, friend. And you know what? We can believe in him. Who can you believe in? You believe in Jesus. I can believe in Jesus. And you know what? Jesus wants to be your friend forever. And my friend and Mr. Hunter's friend, he wants to be our friend forever. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that you came as a baby and you lived among us. We thank you for growing up and teaching us how to heal, how to feed people, how to take care of people. Jesus, we are thankful that we can believe in you. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us this week and hold our hand just a little bit tighter we know that you love each one of us. In your holy and precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to have to take off my glasses and, and squint a little bit because I'm trying to get focused in on what, well, maybe the glasses will help. Focused in on our subject for this month as we continue to talk about focus for this summer. And last month we talked about determination. And this month, we're gonna talk about faith. Faith, right. And I think for those who were with us during the, the worship service this morning, it ties right in because we talked a lot about faith. Faith of those who have been before us, faith of those who are going forward now. And you know, Pastor Tammy did a phenomenal job sharing with us that let's go message absolutely and i was so en enthralled with that so i'm very encouraged so um faith this month is going to be faith is trusting what you can't see because of what you can see mm -hmm. and so this month we're going to talk about different phrases like this month fin finish this this phrase for me um keep the that's right keep the faith all right, how about this one? Faith can move mountains. That's right. Faith can move mountains. Let's try one more. Take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. That's right. Of course, the best place to find out about faith is going to be in our Bibles. Yes. And all the stories that are shared there. Now, we can't see God, but we have God's word inside these pages and and we can find all those stories and the writer of the book of hebrews starts out in chapter 11 and that's going to be part of our memory verse this, this month and it starts out in verse one it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good testimony well we're going to change that just a little bit to say Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. And that comes from, again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, the book of uh, Hebrews and the writer of Hebrews went on to mention some men and women in God's story. And, and taken from the Old Testament, let's talk about some of those people. There was Noah and Abraham. And if you remember, Abraham, God told him to move his family to a far, far away land. And Abraham was getting old and they had no children. So think about it. We know families that are getting ready to move right now and they have children. And that means that there's a lot of stuff that has to get moved. Now, if it was just Abraham and Sarah, it would have been pretty simple. Right. But God had one other thing for him. What's he that? said, I have a surprise. Oh. You are going to have a child. But he was old. But God promised a child, and he gave him one. So um, as we move forward, 
God sent his rescuer, Jesus. And Jesus was uh, one of Abraham's, let's see, great, 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 well, you get it, great, great grandkids. He came from the lineage of Abraham. And Abraham had God's promise that he could still, he couldn't see God, but that we could still trust him. And Abraham continued to trust God. And because of Abraham's faith, Others in his family would also go on to have great faith in people like Isaac and, and Jacob and Joseph. They all put their faith in God. God even spoke to Moses from a burning bush. Now, have you ever had a conversation with somebody from a burning bush? I haven't. No, me either. Me either. But God spoke to Moses through that burning bush. And Moses was even raised by Pharaoh's daughter. He chose, but he chose to stand with his own people against Pharaoh because he bravely led God's people, the Israelites, to freedom. Now that's just a few of the people that, that the writer of Hebrews tells us about in that book. And, and there's a lot more in the Old Testament that we can, we can talk about. But there's one other one I want to highlight, and that was... That was David, because he was the greatest king that there was. And God promised David that he would be a king, but he wasn't a king overnight. David had to go through a lot of turmoil and a lot of challenges, and he spent years and years running from King Saul, fearing for, for his life. Still, David chose to trust God, and he believed that God would keep his promise and eventually God did, and David became a great king. Now, none of those people from the Old Testament could see with their own eyes how God was going to save his people. Instead, they saw the way God worked in their lives, and they chose to believe in his greater plan, and they chose faith. They chose faith. Even because, though they couldn't see it, they believed it. They believed it. They believed it. Right. But here's where things get really interesting. You know, today, God always has a plan, had a plan to send Jesus our Savior. But all, out of all these people we've talked to about here, the rest of the people listed in the book of Hebrews, and many more from the Old Testament, guess how many of those people actually got to see God's plan come true? Zero. Zilch. Nada. Not a one. God has planned something better for us, for us. God's plan includes all of us, and it goes all the way back to creation. You see, God has always had a plan to send his rescuer, and at just the right moment, he sent his son, Jesus. Think about those early believers. There's Peter and John and, and all the other followers of Jesus. They got to see Jesus teach and preach. They got to see him perform the miracles. They got to see him after he died, God raised him up and raised him into new life. But after Jesus returned to heaven, they continued to have their faith and to live by faith. And because of what those new Christians in the new early church had seen, they believed in what they couldn't see. But at the end of the story, God will make everything right. So our bottom line is you know you can trust Jesus, even though you've never seen him. We can trust Jesus, even though we've never seen him. And the thing that I want to really focus on for just another minute or two this morning, we've seen our graduates, we've talked, heard their stories, we've heard them talk about their faith journeys. And for all of our, our elementary students and our preschool and kindergarten students, I want you to start thinking about who's working with you on your faith journey. Sometimes it's not easy to look back into history and say, oh, yeah, I can relate to that, or I can relate to that, because it's been so long ago. But how about those people that are working with us right now? We've heard stories of those who have left legacies for those who are coming through right now. We heard about the Errol, uh, Ada and Harold Beck and the scholarship that they left. We heard about Bernice and Delbert Foster and the legacy that they've left for us. We've heard about the generosity of Linda and Derek Harks yes. 
and a barber in Daryl Pauly yes. and, and, and the Putnam family and what they've left That's for amazing. us. That's amazing. And we don't want to forget our, our dear families uh, with Anna Brito and the f foundation that she created and it was created for her and her name and, and the many, many people that she's touched. So I ask, who else is on your faith journey? Maybe it's your grandparents. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's an aunt or an uncle. I heard some of those mentioned on some of the stories and the bios that were shared by our graduates. Maybe it's your brothers or your sisters or your cousins. Maybe it's a special friend of your family that's helping you with your, with your journey. Perhaps even it might be your Sunday school teachers. We have you know, Miss Susan and Miss Rachel and Miss Lily and Miss Maywish and Mr. Dave and Mr. Sam. How about Miss Mary Helena, Miss Aleda, Miss Floor? That's and a lot of people. That's a lot of people that are helping form our faith and provide us the encouragement right now today. Amen. And what about our pastors who give so generously? Pastor Jen, Pastor Yolanda, Pastor Tammy, who gave us an encouraging message this morning Amazing. about let's go. Who else can you think about? Well, no matter how you feel about putting your faith in Jesus right now, it's always good to talk to others who trust him. And I encourage you to read your Bible and to learn the stories of all the people who came before us who had faith in Jesus. And all these things will allow you to keep you growing in your faith. Let's go to God. Gracious God, we do thank you this morning for the opportunity to reflect on those who have gone before us, those who could not see and those of us who still can't see you, but we can see all the creatures and creation that you've given us as your children, each and every one of us, a child of yours. Gracious God, we ask that you be with us this week. We ask that you be with each of our students, that you will help them finish strong this current school year and help them to enjoy their summers and then prepare for whatever you have in front of us each and every day. Be with us now. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I want to give you one more thing to think about. Aren't you grateful that that angel came to Mary? I am. And she said, you're going to have a baby and it's going to be a boy and you're going to name him Jesus. Look, look at the legacy of, of Jesus. Amazing. It just goes on and on and on. And we want to be able to carry that on. So get ready to share the love of Christ with anyone that you see. Because we are all waiting to hear that fabulous story. Absolutely. Amen. Well, have a great week. We look forward to seeing you guys again soon. We'll see you next Sunday, 1115. Be there. It's going to be a good month. I spy with my little eyes. And I don't know what I can't see, but I believe in what I can't see. God bless. Take care. Have a good week.